Hi, my name is Matt Holliday and welcome back to my class on programming in Go. Now I want to talk about static analysis, okay? otherwise known as linting. And it's a set of tools and a practice, if you will, with those tools to make your code better by looking at it before you run it. Okay? We have the compiler, the compiler compiles your code, but we also have tools that can do things to inspect your code and help you before you actually run the program. So I want to start with a quote by Dave Cheney, another one from his blog. It's about readability of your software. And his point, of course, is, well, readability is really about maintainability, right? And the code is going to be more maintainable if it's more readable, right? Because we want to focus on helping the reader. We read programs a lot more than we write them, okay? So we have a reading culture, or we could call it a writing culture. And it's partly directed to having clean code. The static and static analysis just means we're not running the program. It's just sitting there on disk. In other words, it's a compile time type of operation. Now, why is it valuable? Well, there's really two reasons. It offloads us. It offloads the code when we're trying, offloads mental effort, I should say, from the code when we're trying to do things like code reviews because we know the tool has already found certain kinds of problems. And it offloads some of our effort while actually coding, because it gives us some guardrails, okay? As we're working, um, we have these tools to help us find things, and some of these are built into IDEs. If you're running an IDE, it may color some things and say, hey, this isn't quite right. But even if you're not running the IDE, these tools will come along and give you warnings about things or tell you things that you should look at and fix. Now, you know, they come in different varieties. There are some of these tools that will look for bugs, and some of them, they're really looking for more things that are stylistic in nature. Okay. Plus, we have our fundamental tool, which I could call it a static analysis tool, right? which is the formatting tool. So I have a motto that I want to sell you. Okay. Start clean, stay clean. That these, these things, just like unit testing, are tools or practices that you should begin from the beginning of a project. Don't let the gunk get there and become technical debt. Just start from day one, applying these tools and letting them help you produce better code. Now, I talked about the whole concept of guardrails, right? Well, you can have confidence in your code before you start writing unit tests if you do static analysis. And the compiler, of course. The compiler finds certain things. The analysis tools find others. Okay? Some of them are going to be in terms of correctness. I just said that. Some of them are going to be stylistic. Okay. The correctness tools in particular are very helpful. Unit testing is a practice that came out of the community of using interpreted dynamically typed languages. Because until you run the code, you don't know anything. I mean, you wrote it in your editor, but until you start running it, there's nothing that's going to evaluate your code. Right? Now, in the world of Go, of course, the first thing is the compiler. It's going to evaluate your code because it has to translate it. And then there's some other things these other tools will find. And you can think of them as guardrails. So just, as you're going along, they help remove certain kinds of dumb mistakes. They're very valuable in that way. All right. So, you know, my standard practice is I'm working along with the code, right? Every time you save the file, format it, fix up the imports list, and run the static analysis. Or you could run it as part of your build process, and I'll show that. I would include GoFumped as one of these tools, right? What does it do? Well, actually, it doesn't analyze your code. In this case, it changes it, right? I use Go Imports more, more likely just because it'll do two things. It will fix any formatting bugs, and it will fix your imports list. And you can do the same thing in the playground. If you go into the playground, there's a little button you check about fixing your includes, and then you hit the Format button. It's doing exactly the same thing. Right? Having a standard format is one of the biggest things about readability in Go, and it also eliminates a whole lot of crap at code reviews where people argue about where do the braces go and things like that that just don't matter that well. They do. There, I've seen plenty of code where the brace style is so weird that the code is hard to read. Okay. Again, we've gotten rid of all that in Go. All right. And like I say, not only the GoFump, but these other tools, when you get to the code review, you can spend more time looking at real issues. Is this stuff going to work or not? And not, oh, well, you didn't format it properly. Right. Um, a standard practice is just to hook up your, your editor or IDE so it does it automatically every time you save the file. 
right? A less desirable practice, but possible, is to put it as a pre-commit hook, right? You could do that also. I think it's better just to do it as you're editing the code. Okay. The next tool I'll mention is also kind of standard, GoLint. And GoLint is actually about stylistic issues, and I've got sort of a list here. Okay. It's based on a couple of publicly accessible documents that have become sort of the community standard for writing code that's readable. So it just helps enforce those, and that's a good thing. Okay. GoVet is another standard tool that looks for actual code issues. And we'll talk through a few of those with examples. These are things that are possibly bugs. Right? Now, I want to tell you two things. The first is, no static analysis tool is going to find all the bugs. The same way the compiler can't. Right? And this is one of these fundamental things when compilers were first invented. Right? They'll find certain bugs. But why can't they find all the bugs? And the answer is, it's a, it's a piece of computer science theory called the halting problem. I'm certainly not going to unpack that. But it's just impossible for a compiler to find all the bugs in a program when compiling it, and these tools have the same limitation. Great, but they do find some, and they're valuable. Now, beyond these, there are a whole bunch of other tools that people have added. One of the neat things about Go is it's designed as a language to be easy to analyze this way. And the standard library has all the stuff in it you need to build a static analysis tool. So it's easy and cheap to build these tools, and a bunch of them have been built, and they're valuable. Okay? They find different kinds of issues. Some of them are code smells. Some of them are possible bugs. Some of them are just stylistic. Right? Don't capitalize your error message. Fine. Every once in a while, you will find something that comes out, and you'll look at it and say, well, yeah, OK, but not this time. So you, we don't treat it quite the same way. right? The compiler has errors and no warnings. The static analysis tool, well, most of those, some of those could be warnings, or we could treat them a little more like warnings. So if it's necessary, we could ignore one. We do that every once in a while. But generally speaking, the tools are good. They'll help you write better code. So here's an example. And this is one that's going to help you find bugs. InfAssign, which stands for ineffectual assignment, an assignment that doesn't actually do anything useful. And what it usually means is you've assigned to a variable you should have looked at, and then you've copied another value on top of it beforehand, and the most common place this is going to happen is, for example, the error. I called two calls. The first call was probably here, and somebody added a second call, and the second call also writes the error, and it overwrites the first one, and then we check the error. But we're only checking the error from the second call and ignoring the one from the first. And the compiler will not tell you that's an error, but in FAsign will come and say, hey, wait a second, you should look at this. This is a great tool. And it helps deal with this issue of shadowing, right? You know, we've talked about the fact that the, the short declaration operator, if I could draw it, allows you to shadow variables. And every once in a while, it catches you up. And this is a great tool for helping find that. All right. We saw, talked about GoVet. Here is an example of GoVet, right? There probably should have been a space in there. I'm using the value of 20, but I'm calling printf with a percent %s for string. Okay, it's a mismatch. Something weird is going to come out. It won't crash your program like it will in C, but something weird is going to come out. Okay. GoLint is going to tell you about style issues. Here's an example. Okay. I put a return at the end of my error string, probably because this was converted from a printf to an error f. All right, and the string just didn't get edited when that happened. So it comes and says, hey, you shouldn't do that. Okay. Go simple is a way of showing you code that can be simplified. Here's a couple of examples. You know, I love this one. We don't. A Boolean does not need to be compared to true. A Boolean is either true or false. So we don't need to say, is it equal to true? We can just drop that part. Okay. And here's another example where we have a variable and an initialization, and it could have been written on one line. And that's just code simplification. Now, there is a tool package that I use, and I think it's very popular now. It's called golangci-lint. And you can take that and just Google that if you don't know what it is. It'll take you to their repo. It's something you can easily install with Homebrew, for example, on your, on your laptop, or you can just install it the hard way. Okay. 
<clears throat> or if you go in into an IDE, like I use Goland, and if I go in and say, hey, turn on Goland CI-Lint, it will just download it and put it in for me. Okay? Um, you can configure it if you need to. It has a standard configuration of certain things it checks for, and then you can write a YAML file to kind of tailor that, and I do that in practice, and check it into your repo. Right? And you can run this thing locally, and you can run it in your CI-CD pipeline. And it's just a step along with, you know, building the program, linting the program, running the unit tests, maybe running the integration tests, then you deploy, then you run your post-deployment test. You got lots of tests. Good. Okay. And if there's a case where you don't think it should apply, you can put a little no lint comment. Now, what I like to do is put something after that, like no lint, and here's why. That way, if somebody else looking at it will say, oh, yeah, okay, I understand why. Okay. Um, I want to go back for a second. There's a couple I didn't show, all right? Um, there's two or three of these that do something similar. Dead code and a couple of others. They help you find some things that the compiler won't. The compiler will typically show you a local variable and a function that didn't get used, but it won't tell you about functions overall that don't get used. Now, your IDE may show that. Your IDE may gray out a name that's not used anywhere in the program but these tools will also help you. And then there's an interesting tool called GoCyclo. Okay, cyclomatic complexity is a way of measuring the complexity of a function based on how many logic branches it has, how many if-thens, how many loops and switches and so on. Okay, when that number gets big, your function is starting to get complicated, you can break it down. I like this model much better than, well, only write two or three lines of code in a function. Well, that's not useful. Some functions need to be longer than others. But when they start getting complicated in a logical sense, then this tool will wake you up and say, hey, wait a minute, cyclomatic complexity in this function is high. You probably should break it up. Okay, I didn't show an example of that, but that's a really good tool also. All right. Okay, so let's go back to right, setup. Um, Visual Studio Code, you can set things up. Now, there's the new Go Please thing, and I don't know all the details about tailoring that. I think it's on by default. But you can still go and decide how to run a few of these things. And so here are some basic VSC settings, right? I want it to run VET on save at the package level. I want it to run Go imports for formatting, all right? I might have format flags. Okay, so when you're talking about how do you do your imports list, typically you have like the standard library, and then you have a space, and then you have third-party packages from GitHub, and then you have a space, and then you have local modules. And this is a way of saying, hey, these prefixes are local. Treat them differently than the other GitHub prefixes, and put some space in there, okay? Um, the go lint tool, and lint flags, and lint on save at the package level. So those are some settings. I also have some standard settings for appearance, but that's less important, okay? Um, and then there's Goland, all right? I use Goland for all of my professional work. It's a great tool. Okay, I'm not selling it and they didn't pay me. I'm just saying I think it's a really neat tool. All right, I use VSC for teaching because I think it's less complicated at the just the picture on the screen. Okay, but I use Goland to actually do the work. And it has settings and it's actually pretty easy. You know, you go in and say I want to add a file watcher and you get a couple of choices pretty easy to turn on Go imports and Golang CI lint and it will download what it needs to download and then it'll just run. Okay, as file watchers, every time you save your file, it just runs these things. Great. Okay, I'm not going to talk about setting up VI or Vim. Okay, it's a little more complicated than I want to get into, but here's a really good fun joke. So that's a really brief introduction to why static analysis and how to do it. Okay, again, it's something I run in my IDE. It's something I run in my make file. It's something I run in CI CD. It's just part of the process. Build the program, lint the program, run the tests. Okay? I do it before I commit every time. And because it's part of our CI CD, pull requests are going to fail if CI CD fails, and CI CD will fail if you haven't properly formatted your code or you have some other lint issue that you haven't dealt with. Okay? And we start clean, we stay clean, and we keep staying clean.